Hey, what's up? This is just a quick video of a demo of sort of like a dice roll board game. Um, let me know what you think. So obviously I've just built a basic little roll dice. You hit the button, skims through some numbers. I get number three. So then my character moves forward three tiles. Um, in the top left, I've just displayed what my current tile number is. Uh, just for reference, uh, roll again. I get a three. So now we should be at tile six, which we can see we are. Uh, again, we'll roll. Uh, five now obviously there are some limitations to this so we're currently at tile 11 um the limitations are if i just come out of this um what i've had to do because of the way nav mesh works i've had to uh, ha actually sort of lower the ground in the center just so then the nav mesh is split into two parts uh, i mean you can totally remove this middle bit altogether Effectively, you want your board area to have its own nav mesh. Um, I've not really found a, a, a decent way of splitting the nav mesh up. So what I mean by that is, if I just put my ground back uh, and then raise it up a little bit, you'll see now that the nav mesh is all one large area. Uh, and the problem is with this, with higher rolls, um, especially near the corners, um, if I roll a number which is here, it will cut straight across. I was kind of hoping I'd get a nice number there. So there you can see, it's cut the corner, um, which is not the effect that I would like. Um, so just to make this uh, better, I'm just lowering the ground to the point where it separates the two. So then when it finds um, the next tile that it needs to go to, its only choice is to go this far. Uh, the other problem that you may encounter is if your dice is going to be sort of like a d20 or something like that and you can roll um, much larger numbers there is a chance that your character might opt to run backwards um, again I, I haven't thought of a solution for that just yet um, but so far I've got to this stage so um, what we do I don't want to make this into a tutorial, but it's just a bit of a, a, a rough idea. Um, each of these tiles are a board tile. Effectively, I've just turned the chamfer cube into a blueprint itself. Uh, and then within them, so you can see here, I'll open it up. Uh, these don't do anything, um, but they have a tile number, uh, which is exposed on spawn and editable. The, the reason for that is I can select each tile and go through tile one, tile two, tile three. I've started at zero, obviously, because loops index from zero. Yeah, it just makes it a little bit easier. Um, but if you want that to be tile one and onwards, you can do that. Um, and then effectively, you obviously make your little, your little dice, uh, which is just a button, to be fair. It's just a button and then a number uh, every time you press it um, uh, in a video I'll do a full video on how I make this delayed loop just to make that sort of like um, number counting um, sort of effect but effectively you just want to get a random number uh, and then set the text uh, to that number obviously you make a reference to that that number as well so then you can you can sort of do maths on it um, what else do we do then what i'll do is all of this is sort of worked inside the controller because that you, you controller can do the move to which talks to the nav mesh um what i do each roll sorry i'll just go back <laughs> again i went i went planning on making this this long but um i've started now so i'll just go into it um your roll is passed into this go to function uh, which is obviously on the player controller. So we're just passing that roll number in. Um, I've got an integer called current tile, uh, which should start from zero. You should probably start on tile zero, if that makes sense. Um, what we do is we get the roll, add that to the current tile. Then what we do, we get all the board tiles. So all actors of class of all the boards. We go through a loop. Um, we take the array element uh, tile number, which if you look on your board tile, that's the only sort of uh, variable we've set up. Um, we keep doing that 
until the current tile plus our row. So if we say six, our current tile is zero, plus six is gonna be six. We're gonna keep going through all of these until one of these tiles has the tile number six. Once that's true, what we do is we get the um, the array element again, which is gonna be that, that tile number six, uh, get its location, and then we use the follow and move to, which comes with the top down template. Um, and then once that loop's complete, we're just going to set our current tile uh, to that, that addition. So, for example, it was 0, add 6, it's now going to become 6. That's going to be our current tile, and that'll just work around nicely. Um, a few other bits and things, bits and pieces that I do. I just I create the widget inside the controller uh, just to make it a little bit easier to link because um, the current tile variable is stored with inside my controller. If I create my widget inside my controller, what I can do is if I go back to the designer, where my dice is, obviously I've set my current tile here. Because um, my widget is made within my controller, as top-down controller, I can use current tile, and that just updates automatically. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. My character actually doesn't do anything at all. Um, and then yeah, you get this little roll dice. So I'll get five. I should move forward to the fifth tile. Uh, you can see up, up the top there, we're at tile five. Roll again, we get two. So now we're at tile seven, as you can see here. And the character just moves uh, around quite nicely. So I um, hope that's what you want. If you want me to go through more of um, a, a full video, uh, I tell you what, because you could probably piece most things together um, from this, um, I'll probably just quickly tag on this delayed loop just in case um, you're able to go through this enough to get it. Um, just obviously for some visual effects, um, when I press the roll button, I set the text to a blue and then also get the font, a set font. Um, what you'll get is, if I recombine this, you'll get just that. You just want to split that and then set up your individual things. Um, annoyingly, that's just reset what I've done. So this was Roboto, um, font size 20, and then it jumps up to 32 afterwards once this loop's complete. Um, so yeah, just, just for visuals, obviously I changed the color whilst we're picking a number. And then once we've got the number, I set it back to Y and increase the font back to 32. Uh, but uh, that is all fed from this delayed loop. Now, I'll open that up and I'll leave it on the screen and then make that slightly more visible. So this is just a, a macro and it's heavily influenced from the, um, just for the for loop. Um, what you can do is, if uh, sorry, I will go back to the graph, my event graph. And if I just type in for loop, you can see this down at the bottom, for loop. If you double click on that, you'll actually get the macro library. Now I would highly recommend not editing this because this is the sort of engine uh, default uh, loop. But what you can, can do is, which is what I did, is just copy these, um, these middle nodes apart from the input and output. On your, um, sorry, your, your screen widget blueprint, as I've done here. All I've done is I've gone to macros bottom left, added a new macro. I've matched the inputs from the standard ones. So first index, last index, loop, body, complete and index. I've just rearranged them to benefit myself. So I've kept the inputs the same first index, last index, but then I've, I've added a delay boolean. So that's a do you want a delay? Yes or no? And then a time delay, which is something you could just type in. Uh, and then for the outputs, I've just rearranged them. So loop body, then complete, then index. Um, and then effectively, all I've done is I've added in these three nodes. Um, so if you look at the standard macro, you've got this branch here. All I've done is I've moved these over. Whoop. Um, added in a condition that if my... Um, first index is the same as the local one so effectively if it's zero and zero 
uh, it's it's not going to add a delay um, however if it's not what it's going to do is um, it's going to add a delay into each loop uh, so just just copy this um, and then you've got what's called well what I've called a delayed loop um, and then you can just plug in I've, I've done it'll pick 10 numbers and then the last number that it's picked out of this random will be then set as the as the actual roll number uh, I've done that at 0.1 I think that's a nice effect it's not too long and it's not too short uh, and then make sure to tick delayed to make sure that you get that uh, and then yeah that's that's pretty much it so if you can make it off that wicked let me know um, if you can't I'll do a bit more of a detailed video about it but